Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now in today's video, we are going to do what many people think is a stupid, inferior, or even worthless genre of photography. And I want to prove why these people could not be more wrong. <laughs> Let's go. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So a few years ago, I went to the British Photography Awards and the guest of honour there was a famous British photographer called Rankin, who photographs celebrities and things like that. And he said, at the start, he said, I've been really chuffed to see all this beautiful photography, the amazing portraits, the beautiful landscapes and the new selfie category. And then he said, and even the macro. It got a big laugh. And it made me, in that moment, it made me realise that a lot of people look down on macro photography and don't value it or ridicule it, essentially. I found that particularly annoying. Not for the least that I was there as the winner of the People's Choice Award in the macro category for this image here. I found it annoying as well because it's just something people do in life generally is to diminish a thing to try and make their own thing seem more important and relevant. It's passive aggressive and I find it extremely irritating. Or, off from Rankin's point of view, it may have just been a shit joke. But I want to prove to you that macro photography can be exciting, it can be fulfilling, it can be artistic. And, and what's good about it is it's really accessible as well. So on a sunny summer's day, like today, when the the chances of getting a good landscape shot are minimal, we can hopefully still pick up a nice macro photograph. Let's go and see what we can do in this beautiful environment, although I am getting eaten alive by not just little bugs, but these big, horrible bugs that keep landing on me and digging something into me. So I'm not quite sure how long I'm going to last here, but let's see what we can do. The place is teeming with life though. Just listen to these grasshoppers. One of the things that I really love about macro photography is that you can just walk around with your camera on a day like today when there is bright sunlight, those moments when you wouldn't be doing landscape photography. But the beauty with macro is that those bright conditions can really benefit you because the depth of field gets so shallow when you get in close with a macro lens that you want to stop down to get a bit more detail and you need bright light for that. After you've done that it's then just a case of getting in close to lots of different things particularly exploring different textures like the trees and the bark and the wood. I particularly like these ferns that I have all around me here and as the light is coming through the trees above me, it's casting all these different interesting shadows and contrast onto the ferns, which are, if I just pull a little bit off, like a really kind of interesting shape. And we can play with that contrast and use it to our advantage and make it part of the image. I'm gonna use it on the live view because I find that quite handy and it focuses well with this camera. So at the moment I'm at F8 and I'm gonna, just roll the shutter speed down, turn the autofocus on as well, see if I can get that focused. It's not focusing because it's blowing around in the wind, so all I'm going to do is turn it into manual focus, go to the closest focusing distance, and then I just move the camera back and forwards and that looks nice. So it's just a case of waiting for the wind to die down a bit, getting the focus right by moving it backwards and forwards and then just firing away. And that looks quite nice. It's got that subtle green background, the interesting shape of that. Let's just do it once more. There's a fly just landed in front of me, just on the fern right in front of you, which is just below the camera. It's a blue bottle type fly and it's just sort of sitting there. So I'm gonna see if I can get, a, get it done. So I'm gonna up my shutter speed to about 250 because if it moves, I want it to freeze the action. Getting nice and close on it. Oh, that's looking good. It's got a lovely bit of light reflecting off the blue colour as well. <laughs> it's like doing wildlife photography with insects. Which <laughs> personally I think is quite exciting. Let's have a look. Do you know what? I think I've nailed that there. Do you know those 
eyes that flies have got where the, there's lots of different bits i've got that super super sharp that was quite lucky i think rather than judgment it's just by moving the camera back and forward and having that uh, smaller aperture and the high iso has allowed me to do that but the um, eyes are reflecting the light and the color and then <laughs> the blue color of the body of the fly you can see the hairs and then it sort of falls away into the bokeh in the background not the really not the shot i was expecting to get but i guess with macro photography that's the exciting thing but have a look i mean it, it's a picture of a fly so it's i don't suppose it's beautiful but it's interesting and i'm glad i captured it and that's the thing with macro photography you can explore and discover new things This quite spiky plant here is quite interesting as well because as I walked past it just sound this, heard this popping sound and these little sort of seeds or shells are like popping open as, the, as they warm up in the sun. And it's creating this amazing sound. Listen to this. Right, so I'm getting absolutely savaged by these little bugs. I've, get, I've been bitten about 10 times and it's, <laughs> they're really quite painful. I've never seen bugs like them, but yeah, it's enough to drive me away but I do have one more idea something that I think is going to make the shot of the day but before we do that as you know this video is sponsored by Squarespace and in my opinion Squarespace is just the best place for photographers to build their website partly because it's just so easy to do you go to their website and by using one of their beautiful templates you can get up and running really quickly and once you've put some of your images on there and a little bit of your text you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. You don't need any technical knowledge either, it's just a case of dragging a few boxes around and it will dynamically adjust to suit any screen that your website is viewed on and that's really important these days where most people look at websites via their phones. The other great thing is Squarespace will grow with you so you can start off with a simple gallery and then later on if you want to you can upgrade to an online store and just as easily start selling things and hopefully making a little bit of money from your photography. They also have award-winning customer service, so go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. <sighs> it's time to get out of here. Let's uh, have a little location change. Right, so I was getting absolutely brutalised by the bugs in that place. These massive things that kept biting me. I'd never seen anything like it. So I've actually come back to my garden. And that is the beautiful thing about macro photography is that you can pretty much do it anywhere. Now, that fly shot was interesting, but they're not particularly pretty. But I think bees are quite beautiful. This French lavender is particularly attractive to the bees. So I'm going to try and capture something without getting stung. All I'm gonna do is try and get some of that purple in there and some of the interesting uh, little leaves on there. But while I try to do that, say we're being devil's advocate and we are trying to say why macro photography might not be as interesting. So maybe the connection we make to a photograph when we're viewing it normally is it's from our perspective. This is something we can see. Maybe that's why landscape photographs are so popular because it puts you in that position as if you were really there witnessing the scene. And that can't happen with macro photography because we don't have that kind of magnification with our eyes. I actually think the same thing happens to me anyway with drone photography. Sometimes when that perspective is so high and so different to what you could see with your own eyes, maybe the connection is not quite there. Got bees buzzing around me now. Anyway, let's uh, try just a couple of thoughts. I love macro photography. I think it's ideal for so many situations and I'm gonna try and now capture one of these bees. Ah, I don't think it's gonna be particularly easy. So let's go into manual and I'm gonna go, I don't know, I think I'm gonna go for about F5.6 to start with, ISO 1600. I'm gonna go into live view and do it that way. And it's quite bright, so I'm gonna speed up and slow the ISO down. I 
I couldn't talk then because it was so close. Uh, I was a little, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit afraid. And I was trying my hardest to track it and I think, I think I've actually succeeded in getting something, which is actually really exciting. I just what I love about photography generally is it can just provide these moments when you get a shot like that and it doesn't matter where you are, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a macro, whether it's a beautiful landscape, whether it's a portrait, it doesn't matter. When you capture an image like that and you've enjoyed the moment, that's why photography is so special and macro is no different. <laughs> that was so much fun.